And he said, no, nah, that's not how LinkedIn works. He was like, <laughs> like, what's your strategy? Like, what's your scripts that you use? What's your DMing strategy? Like this, and I was like, I don't send any DMs. But once I started teaching it, and everyone was just raving about it. Like everybody understood it. Everybody could see how it would apply to their business and everybody got results. So I really would probably make more money myself if I didn't sell to broke people, but broke people are my jam. On today's Engaging Marketeer, I am speaking with Helen Tudor, who is a LinkedIn coach, mastermind owner, and general expert on all things LinkedIn and how you get your ideal target client coming to you. She's not going to talk to you about how you DM hundreds of people a week or how you do loads of sales messages or how you sell, 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 sell. She's going to talk to you about the really cool stuff, the kind of stuff that you're going to want to do because it doesn't cost you any money. There's no paying for a premium account. There's no using automation. There's no nasty DMs or sales messages. It's about doing the stuff that you're going to want to do to get people coming to you. So let's talk to Helen and find out exactly how you can do that. I believe you have a, a similar background to myself in that you were in the, 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 the dark, boring, techie stuff of, of SEO some time ago. I was, Darren. I didn't know what you were going to say then. I was like, what have we done <laughs> yeah. together? What, what, have, uh, what have we done boring together? Yeah, and, and SEO, is, is that correct? Have I understood that right? My very first job in the online space, if you like, was an SEO link builder. So what I was doing Ooh. was pitching for and finding blogs that would take our content for a company called Car Finance 24-7. Hmm. Yeah, so I had to like think of... 100 different ways to write blogs for about cars to try and appeal to different niches. I didn't write the blogs, but I just need my job was to create the relationships mm. and that. And I used to pay, that was the old days. Yeah, I used, I used to, to pay, pay. Ah, the old days of paid links. Yes, Google, no likey that. No. One of those things that every agency says they didn't do, but a lot of them were doing anyway. But it sounds like you were doing it in a good way, though. You were finding quality websites to put the links on. Really, I suppose it was more of a relationship building role because I was trying to find bloggers. And this was like early, early days. I'm not thinking even what year it would have been, but a long, long time ago. Um, and it was building relationships with, with bloggers. So in those days, it was kind of like, it was quite new. So these were like, like mummy bloggers. I'd like message them and be like, oh, where's your blog? And, you know, can we, we want to do like a sponsored post on seven seat, you know, seven seat cars or something like that, you know, so it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was just sales really. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm all, as long as I'm selling, I'm happy. And it's quite interesting that that, what you were doing, the, the outreach is one of the hardest parts of, of SEO in contacting people, getting a relationship with them, getting them to trust that you are a genuine person and that you're going to complete on the transaction because you, you, you're paying them uh, and that they're going to get that money and it's going to be genuine and and the, the site they're going to be linking to is going to be genuine as well. It's not yeah. going to turn into a gambling site or an adult site or something like that. Um, it was It was very, it was all, it was kind of, it was grey hat in a way because it was paid. But apart from that, everything else was was super, you know, ethical and above board and really did make a difference. So I think it really taught me that sort of sales skill of making it a win-win for everybody and positioning it so they understood what was in it for them, you know. So it worked really well. Yeah, it was good. Good fun. I'm, I'm, I'm quite interested in the technical part. How, how did you make the contact with the, the website owners initially? Just grinding it out. I, I, always, I still talk about this now, like using the internet like the ideal client and then searching for all the blogs and then looking at the blogs and then doing the contact me page. It was very kind of manual. There was no kind of whizzy automation involved mm. at all. So it was it was quite manual, but I got paid quite well. I remember going for the interview uh, and they said about your expectations. And I, I remember saying, well, 18 grand a year. And he said, well, we were thinking 20. And I just thought, oh, cool. <laughs> so <laughs> it felt like, and it was a startup, so it was kind of cool and trendy it was in manchester and there's two young lads that sort of founded it and you know we used to like go to the casino on the work nights and stuff so it was um it was good to be a part of something that was kind of new and exciting and growing and it was in the online space at that those really early startup days mm. and manchester's also got a real scene for that for digital marketing as well yeah it has and and i went from there really to start my own 
digital marketing agency. And I, I was kind of on the scene, if you like, for, for quite a while, you know, in the agency scene. I ran a couple of different agencies, I had like a social media agency to start with. Um, and then we went into more recruitment, so employer branding and using Facebook ads to do recruitment. So when I look back, knowing what I know now, I'd say like we were really ahead of the curve, you know, and it just became difficult because I was trying to educate people as well as sell to them. But now you just, you know, it's just a lot easier because people get what Facebook ads are, they get what, you know, what social media can do for recruitment but in those days you know when I was going into clients they'd just be saying oh we just put an ad on it indeed and that's how we got our, our you know <laughs> candidates and the candidates were all rubbish and I'm like you know it's, people say it's hard to find good staff but they just don't try hard enough so that was a lot of fun as well. Yeah or well, obviously they get recruiters and recruiters charge an astronomical fee. Good business though I always say this I think I used to be a recruiter as well back in, way way back in the day yeah, when right. I was like 18, 19 because the only job you could walk into where you got like paid and you know and a car and you know you didn't have to have any experience and again I think recruiters they do get a bad press and some of it is I used to have this presentation called be less recruiter I used to teach them about how to use LinkedIn better but um they do get a bad press but I think they are when you get a good one you get a good one they do they do earn the money um but it's also such a great business I always sort of think Maybe I should have a recruitment business because they're just <laughs> so cash rich, aren't they? And it's just again, it's the win-win. It's finding, it's fixing the problem in the middle. So yeah, it's people trafficking, really, isn't it? It's legalized people <laughs> trafficking. It is. Yeah. So, what made you go from the agency to doing the the LinkedIn work that you're doing now? I tell you, I got there's this guy, and I tell this story. In fact, I'm in the middle of a challenge right now, and on a Wednesday in the challenge, I do my story whether they want to hear it or not, I tell them my story. We've got about 7,000 people in the challenge this week. Um, and there's this guy that I was at an event sat next to, and it was a networking event. It was in a golf club. There was a picture of Queen on the wall, RIP. Um, and we were, you know, eating like the seventh full English breakfast of the week or whatever, you know, and used to go to loads of breakfast meetings. And he said to me, he said, oh, I was working in the employee branding agency. And he said to me, how are you getting all these clients? Because I was working with like Eddie Stobarts, I was working with Lakeland Plastics, XPO Logistics, like big, you know, big clients. And um, I said, oh, they all come to me on LinkedIn. And he said, no, that's not how LinkedIn works. He was like, <laughs> like, what's your strategy? Like, what's your script that you use? What's your DMing strategy? Like this. And I was like, I don't send any DMs. And he's like, all right, okay, well, what do you write in your personalized connection request? And I was like, I don't write a personalized connection request. And he was like, no, this isn't how LinkedIn works. And I was like, no, it really is. This is how it works for me. And I was like, all I do is I've got a headline that speaks to my other client. So I think then it was something like helping HR directors hire better people faster using Facebook ads, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then my profile just spoke to HR directors about how I could help them. And my pricing was all in there. And it was like, you know, three grand a month, got 10 client spaces available, whatever. And then... And then I just used to add HR directors every day and I put out content for HR directors and I'd engage on posts every day so people would see my headline. And that's kind of what I've been doing. And then over time, people just message me and say, oh, I saw your posts and, you know, you asked me to connect and we've got a problem with recruitment. Can you help us? And they already knew the price and then they'd just sign up. And he was like, nah. It was really funny. I wish, I just wish I could remember it because I owe this guy a pint because I did it on a napkin. I, there was a napkin on the table and I drew it on the table. I was like, this is what you do, right? You have your profile looks like, you know, headline, profile. And then, you know, these are the four types of posts that I put out. And mm. this is how I do my comments. And this is how I grow my audience every day. And he took the piece of paper, the napkin away. And then a few weeks later, I saw him again. And he was like, Alan, that's fine. I was like, what? Well, he went, I got a lead. I was like, yeah, no, that's how it works. And he's like, no, you don't understand. He's like, this isn't how LinkedIn works. You've got to be on there all the time. You've got to be, you know, you've got to know when to post. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. And I was like, that's all absolute bullshit. Like, just forget all that. Like, you just need to do these three things every day. And he's like, I know, I've been doing it and it's worked. I've got an inquiry. And I was like, yeah, that's how it works. And he was, he said to me, Helen, you don't understand. You've got to teach this because <laughs> nobody's teaching it like this. Everybody, he said, I've done all these courses. I've gone to loads of workshops. I've had people come and speak at events. He said, and they've all made it so complicated and you've just made it so simple. So I just thought, oh, maybe I will. And then, you know, 2,000 paying students and 3 million in sales later, here I am. <laughs> so if that guy, if this story ever gets back to that guy, 
please do reach out because I owe you a pint and a lobster dinner, if that's what you want. But I cannot remember for the life of me who it was. <laughs> that's a fantastic story. Uh, yeah. The fact that you explained it in such a simple way that he took it away, did it, and got results immediately. Yeah, like you don't need any more than that. And that's what I teach today, like now. It's the exact same thing. Nothing's changed in six years. Exact same thing. It's just basics. It's just basics of growing your audience, engaging with your audience, get in front of your audience. And the rest of it, like people join my program because they're like, right, now can you give us the advanced stuff? And I'm like, that's it. You've had it. <laughs> no, there is no advanced stuff. Yeah, we could talk about like you can test things and there's a few like cool things that I quite like, but there's also loads of crap that I don't use. So, you know, I really like polls at the moment. I think LinkedIn audio and LinkedIn events are pretty cool, but loads of loads of it's rubbish. Like business pages are rubbish, like groups are rubbish. You know, nobody knows how the algorithm works. So I don't know how you can teach that because we just don't know. So, you know, it's not really changed in all that time. And I think that's been, that's why I'm so lucky because it's just something that I made up that every, it just, when I started to teach it, I thought, well, I'll just teach it. I used to charge. And I, I said, I, did, I put this, put, you know, online. I was like, I'll help three people get leads from LinkedIn and I won't charge you, but I want a testimonial, you know, to see if I can do it. If what I teach you works as well as it's worked for me and this random guy. And I did. I got three people who to do it for free. So I did it for them. And one of them actually ended up being a sort of like a, not a business partner, but like we worked really closely together and, we made a lot of money together. He bought an Aston Martin off the back of working with me. So he was one of my very first, you know, to show it. And he said the same thing. He said, Helen, this isn't how people are doing it. This is not how people are teaching it. You know, he said, I've never even thought about using LinkedIn for my business. He was like a, a PT, like a fit pro um, strategy guy, like a market. He was a marketer. But he was like, oh, we're all slogging it out on Facebook and Instagram. And there's you just getting all these great clients on LinkedIn. And, and he said, and now I can really see the opportunity for me. And um, so, yeah, then I started charging 99 pounds and, you know, now I charge 750, but, you know, and I just started teaching it, teaching it, teaching it. And then everybody that I taught, it worked for. And that's when I thought, I mean, I'm not stupid. That's when I thought I, I'm onto something here because. Yeah, there's something in this. Yeah, there's something in this. It's not something that's special to me that I can do. It's that I've taught all of these different people now. I did hundreds and hundreds of these. I thought I'll do three. You know, I know I wanted to make two grand to redo my patio. So like, <laughs> my ex-husband was a builder and he'd left and, you know, took the telly of the car and the garden was a mess. And I thought, all right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just make two grand and I'll charge 100 quid and I'll get, you know, 20 clients and I'll just get the patio done and that'll be the end of it. But once I started teaching it and everyone was just raving about it, like everybody understood it. Everybody could see how it would apply to their business and everybody got results. And I was like, oh, this is, quite special because quite often you can be really good at doing something yourself, but it's quite hard to either teach it or someone else doing it doesn't work as well. Whereas this was just working for everybody. There was like businesses like all over the world. I was working with people like Australia, like New Zealand. So it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what you do. So I was working with like B2B, B2C, high ticket stuff, low ticket, like product-based business, like people selling to corporates, people selling to like, like low income people, people, you know, network marketers, people like local businesses, you know, like hairdressers and dog groomers and, you know, right up to like corporate, you know, like high level corporate consultancy stuff. So, you know, anything from 20 quid to 20 grand and it was just all working. So I was like, oh, mm. this, this is pretty cool. So yeah, I've never met somebody I can't help. Well, I think the, it's interesting how you've gone from essentially outreach when you started doing it for the blogging. Which is hard work. <laughs> which, is, which is hard work, time-consuming, and you've got to kiss a lot of frogs. It, it's very yeah. low conversion rate. Yeah. To complete flipping it the opposite way, so what you're getting now is all inbound, and what yeah. you're teaching people is inbound. It's the exact opposite of, of yeah. how you started. And don't get me wrong, if you DM everyone you meet on LinkedIn, you'll get leads. Yeah, you know, it's just like it's just like standing outside Asda and asking if everyone's got everyone's got Sky TV. You'll get one out of a hundred, but everyone else yeah. will just want to either not speak to you, or they'll be rude to you, or they'll you know, or they'll get mad at you. So it's the same with DMing on LinkedIn. If you DM every single person asking if they want to lose weight, or you want to if they want to make more money, or if they want to like get the dog groomed, like it's it, one out of a hundred might say, actually, you've caught me just at the right time. But 100 to mm. 1 is just not my kind of odds because in the meantime, 
It makes you feel, I've done it, I've done DMing, but it's like, it, it doesn't feel nice, it doesn't feel good, people don't like it, people get mad at you or they block you or they report you. So what I say to people when they come to me and they've been DMing for a long time and it works, I'm like, of course it works, everything works. But you know, just before I came on this call, someone's like cold calling me about my mobile phone, I'm like, of course it works, hmm. but how does it make you feel? You know, I was like that to that woman. I was like, look, I'm really busy. I'm just going on a call. I'm absolutely, I was like, my account is absolutely fine. Thanks. Put the phone down. I'm trying to be as polite as I can because I know outbound is hard. But at the same time, like when I want to buy mobile phones, I'll go and buy a mobile phone. And it'll be the person who's in front of me who's got the advert in front of me at the right time, right? That I'll choose or somebody I've got a relationship with. And it's the same with this. People hate to be sold to what people love to buy. So all I do is create an ecosystem around the personal profile where people come when they're ready, you know, and mm. we can't force people to be ready to buy. But with my stuff, when they find you, they feel like they found you. Does that makes sense. Cause that yeah. you just appeared in there. They don't know that you're asking to connect with people just like them all day. And you've written, you know, not all day, like, you know, every single day you're asking to people, you know, and you've got a headline that speaks directly to that person. So to them, you know, because although I've taught hundreds of thousands of people the stuff, there's still 950 million people like who don't use my methods. So to them, they're like, oh, speaks directly to me. It's like, you know me, you know, because we do the ICA work, the ideal client work. They're like, oh, I re you know, you asked to connect with me and I looked at your headline and I thought that's interesting because, you know, I am a HR director and I can't recruit people or, you know, I am a, a female executive who wants to lose mm. 10 pounds or whatever. And then, and then I came to your profile and it just spoke directly to me. And then I looked around all your other stuff and I watched your videos and I looked at your reviews and now I'm messaging you because I'd really like to, you know, I can see how much it is. I can see what it is and I'd really like to buy it from you. So they're almost like excited to buy. Whereas the energy of DMing everybody in the hope someone's going to buy is, is much, much more hostile and not a very nice way to spend your day. Yeah, yeah it's a battle. But, I think that the main difference in the way you do it and the way most people do it on LinkedIn is that you're making it about the person you want to target, yeah. whereas yeah. most people will make it about themselves. They'll yeah. say, this is what I do. This is the experience I've got. These are the clients I've worked with. And particularly with yeah. the DMs, they'll message you and they'll say, I've got 10 years experience in SEO, as if that's a lot. I've got 10 years experience <laughs> in SEO. Here's a list of clients that I've worked with. Contact yeah. me for prices. No one cares, mate. No one cares about you. But I say, like when I'm, when I'm on stage, I'm like, Bad news is the same as good news, really. Bad news is no one cares about you and your business. Good news is no one cares about you and your business, right? So it's kind of like you can go on and just talk all about them. You know, and it's so much easier to sell to somebody when you're talking to them. You know, I've, I've worked with some pretty high level people. And, you know, I have to say to them, look, mate, no one cares that you've written four books. You care because you wrote them. Yes, it's important further down the page. When they're like, okay, this, so this person, so your ideal client should look at you, come to your LinkedIn and be like, yes, that is me. So it's like, are you this person? Do you feel this way? Are these things happening? Do you want these things to happen? So that's always the first half. It's all about, I know who you are. I know who you feel and I know what you want. Yeah. And if they're not that person, they don't feel like that way and they don't want that thing, then they're not your ideal client, right? So they'll just yeah. click off and that's okay. But if they read on, then it says, if so, I can help, then... This is who I am. This is what I do. This is why I do it. You know, this is about me as a person. This is why you should take action. And this is what you need to do next. Yeah, then you can talk about your books or your speaking or your awards that you've won. But that's only really when you've you've got them like on the hook, as I would say, because you want to think of your ideal client just sat there. You know, the thing about selling on LinkedIn, most people on LinkedIn are sad. Like they're <laughs> looking for transformation. They're looking for something. Most people on LinkedIn are in jobs they hate in relationships that make them unhappy. They're looking for transformation. They're looking, they're thinking, what's next? What is my life? Is this it? You know, so if you sell any kind of transformation, whether it's lose weight, get a divorce, like buy some new shoes, you know, make more money, you know, change the business, like they're ready. They're, they're ready for it, but they're not searching for it. They're not on LinkedIn searching for transformation. So that's why you have to come into their awareness. And again, the other thing with LinkedIn is, in the way I teach it is, you're not gonna get any engagement. That's not what it's there for. So if you sell transformation, for example, people aren't going to comment. You know, I just come off a call, VIP call, the challenge, and, you know, she does alcohol stuff, like sober curious stuff, which is dead hot at the moment. And people aren't going to comment on that at work. 
you're mad. You know, people say like, oh, po- you know, I did this really post about alcohol and no one commented. Well, of course I didn't because everyone at work can see. <laughs> but they're watching and they'll message you or they'll come to your free webinar or they'll download your freebie or whatever using their private email address. So you come into their awareness, but it's not a it's not an engagement platform. That's not what it's there for. This is, again, this is what other people seem to really put a lot of, um, you know, stuff like they're like, oh, I can get, help you get, you know, write posts to get loads of engagement. Like, who cares? Who wants loads of engagement? We want people to see our stuff and buy from us, right? I can get loads of engagement. I can go today and post about the Tory government and get a load of engagement, but it's not going to help me sell LinkedIn programs, right? So I just post about who I am, what I do, why I do it. I make sure there's plenty of stories, plenty of social proof and plenty of video because that is more video we do the more money we make and plenty of selling making offers every single day so that's as easy as that it's, it's interesting what you said about engagement there because a lot of digital marketing agencies particularly they focus on traffic rankings engagement <laughs> followers that kind of thing less so on results because obviously yeah. they're, they're harder to get yeah. you talk about engagement there on linkedin there are a lot of people i speak to who think they've cracked LinkedIn because yeah. they've had someone speak to them about being in an engagement ring on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah, part with, engagement pod, yeah. Yeah, right. where they're in a group of 20, 30 people yeah. and they <laughs> all post and yeah. share it. What, give us your thoughts. I know, I know exactly what I think of those and I know what you think of those already without even asking, but for the people listening, what is wrong with them? Well, everything's wrong with them, but the one thing I always focus on when someone comes to me and says, I'm in this engagement, blah, blah, blah. I would say, how does it make you feel? Yeah. How does it make you feel? And they normally say, well, it makes me feel like I've got to go and comment on loads of people's stuff and people are commenting on my stuff and I don't really know who they are and I don't really know what it matters and it just feels like something else to do. Like, and I don't really know what it's, if it's working, blah, 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 blah. Engagement pods are absolutely, I mean, it's just so bad. It's just such an awful thing to do to force 20 people to comment on your post and you've got to comment on theirs. It just doesn't make any sense. It's silly. Like, this is the thing. A lot of my stuff might sound counterintuitive. When you actually think about it, it makes sense. What's the point of 20 people coming on your post? Yes, you'll get more views, as in more people will see your post, but these are the people of their people. They're not even, they're not your idle clients. Like, it's just, it's just a, something that you're going to force yourself to do. It's going to feel horrible and is not going to have much impact. So don't do it. In my opinion, other opinions are available. Other opinions are available, notably from the people that run engagement pods. Of course, and I get it. And you know what? I could make a lot of money. I could run, you know, I've got 40,000 followers and, you know, hundreds of thousands of million channels and that. I could make loads of money with an engagement pod, you know? But I don't even allow them in my group. Yeah, that's good. I don't even let people say, let's all follow each other on LinkedIn, because that's not that's not what my stuff's about. The only thing that I care about and the only metric I ask people to follow and the only one I care about is profile views. Profile views do matter because if you get people from complete stranger into browser, clicking on your headline and making that micro commitment to you, coming to your profile, you've definitely got a commitment of interest there. They might not buy from you, but you've got a commitment of interest. Mm. And there's a direct correlation between the more profile views you get where they're reading all that long form copy. You know, we've got, I call it like a love letter to your ideal client, but it's a long form, 2,600 characters is a lot of characters. You know, when you think about the other platforms and the other profiles you get, you can get them there and you can keep them there. You'll know about this. Like the longer we can keep them there, consuming content. So you've got your, you know, your pinned posts or whatever they call now, the featured <laughs> posts so people can go and watch videos of you. They can read blogs about you. You can do all that kind of stuff. You know, I've got 400 and odd, you know, um, review like recommendations so people can spend time going through them if they want and it just keeps people in your world i think it's better than a website to be honest it's got better alexa rank than most websites anyway <laughs> and you can make it really you know sorry you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <it's, laughs> so you can drive traffic to it's definitely better than my website but, no, <laughs> but you can drive traffic to it inside the platform right so the growth mm. asking people to connect every day is going to get new views profile views almost guaranteed so do 10 to 15 of those a day to not upset the LinkedIn gods. You know, comments every day on other people's stuff. So comment on other people's stuff without selling your shit. Don't do that in the comments. Everyone can see it a mile off. Don't try and add value in the comments. Just support what that person's trying to achieve because everyone wants engagement on LinkedIn. So engage 
but engage on other people's stuff. Don't worry about what's happening on yours. Mm. So comment on what's in your feed every day to be a good citizen of LinkedIn and just being polite and, you know, vanilla. We're not here to have a debate. We're not here to, that's not what people want. Just want to support them, make them seen and heard. More people see your headline, you're going to get more profile views. And then putting out content, you know, every day, posting multiple times a day so that more people see who you are and what you're about and see your headline so people come through. Click on your headline and come to your profile views. And profile views do translate into cash in the bank. So that, that's interesting. That's I, I hadn't thought of it that way, that profile views are more important because, yeah, that, that's a commitment. That's a click through. That's like somebody searching for you in Google and clicking through to your website. Yeah, they've it's, made a it, commitment it, they want to know more. It's, yeah, it's a it's a heavy commitment in the world that we live in, right? Because mm. it's, they've, they've seen you somewhere and obviously you're going to position yourself in front of them, right? So you're asking to connect with people, you're doing comments every day, you're putting content out every day. So you're making it, you, you're giving yourself the best possible chance for more people to see your headline. But it's all about the headline, most important thing on LinkedIn, most important bit of real estate because it's that micro pitch that talks to your ideal client. So the um, what I use is my template, Again, other opinions are available, which is helping. So an active doing word. So helping X, Y, Z, your ideal client, whoever that is, like really call them out. The more niche you can be here, the better this works, my stuff. Um, helping your ideal client achieve the outcomes that you sell, not the how you do it yet. So the outcomes first mm. and then buy the thing that you do at a price, ideally. So we're not going to get on sales calls and talk about price. Um, and some keywords in there, that's... Again, a lot of real estate. I think you've got two. Well, I know you've got 220 characters there. Hmm. You can get quite a lot in, so in two or three lines. In the old days, you used to get more in with if you had an iPhone, but I don't think that works anymore. Um, but that bit, that's clickable, and it talks to your ideal client. Hmm. It's a little micro elevator pitch. It follows you around everywhere, so you don't need to add value in the comments. You can just hmm. support what they're doing, and people will see your headline. So the more people see your headline, the more people click on it, the more people you get to your profile, hmm. the longer they stay consuming your content the more sales more inquiries you'll get and then more sales because every time you leave a comment your headline is being yeah. seen by people you're effectively pasting your headline pasting yeah. your advert in front of people that's exactly it you by get doing it, it in a clever subtle way yeah, yeah. by most... not talking about what you do is, is the pro move the amateur yeah. move and i've done this as well is finding, you know, and then be like, have you thought about doing LinkedIn? And I've got a free five-day challenge, blah, blah, blah. That's like the amateur move when you kind of done what you're doing. Then the pro move is just to go and support, like, well, congratulations on winning your award. That looks amazing. Or, yeah, this looks like an amazing event. I hope it goes really well for you. Those kind of vanilla comments, what people love, because it's just supporting what they're, they're trying to achieve, what you're right. Yeah, exactly. It, I call it like stamping your headline out. And there's no limit on the amount of comments you can do. There's no, so connection requests, you can only do so many. We think it's about 115 a week. Don't quote me on that because I think, link. I, I did meet somebody from LinkedIn at an event. I was speaking at EMC and the, he was actually on the board of LinkedIn. So I did try and get try and get as much <laughs> intel as I could. But again, he doesn't know how the algorithm works probably. He's just on the, you know, he knows more than me, but he still probably doesn't know. Mm. So, you know, he, he, he was kind of like, you can't just keep asking to connect with people or, you know, unlimited. But comments... It's fine because that's what LinkedIn want. They want an engaged platform, right? Mm. So you could do, if you wanted to, you could do a thousand comments in a day. You know, I always say, if you're watching Netflix and we all know we're not really watching what we're watching, instead of scrolling through Facebook, just do your comments on LinkedIn because you don't really need to put too much thought into it. But just think, you know, you wake up in the... And the other thing is it's so tangible and I like cause and effect. So if you go and do... 50 comments on LinkedIn, yeah. And you just go through whatever's in your feed, you don't overthink it, just like, you know, polite comments. You will see your profile views go up, mm. like within 24 hours. Yeah. So it's almost like it's quite, that dopamine, you don't get a dopamine hit from LinkedIn from engagement because people don't engage on your stuff, like I said before. It's not like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. They're like social media platforms in the truest sense of the word. They're designed to keep you addicted, keep you rewarded, you know, keep that dopamine going. LinkedIn's not like that. It's like, you know, it's a bit of a boring old uncle at the party. It's not very cool, but it's a business networking thing. It's for, it, it's traditionally was just for CVs. So it's, it's a big ship that's moving slowly and it's not, it doesn't throw up things in the feed and stuff like that very well. It's all, it's a little bit, you know, God love Microsoft. I mean, Microsoft buying them was like, oh, like, you know, you know, we wanted somebody who was more social media and less techie. Yeah. 
you know, it's kind of made it even a bit more, you know, it's all about well, that. Bugs that, and that you know, tech said. Yeah. So it, I just, uh, this is a funny thing though. I had a call with my accountant today and, and she was saying like, what's the plan here? And I was like, I don't know because I just still love talking about it. You know, I still love talking about it. I'm not remotely bored of it. Cause I'm, my dad said to me once, he said, uh, he said, do you think you've taught everyone now? I was like, Dad, there's like 950 million people on LinkedIn itself. And then that's before we'd look at all the people who aren't on LinkedIn. You know, I said, I'm never going to run out of people to help with this stuff. And because I know it works and it's free, so you don't need to spend any money. You don't need premium. It does grease the wheels a bit. And if you've got an established business, it's tax deductible and all that. But a lot of people I work with are broke. Mm. You know, they come to me because my story is I was broke. You know, I was 90 grand in personal debt, a single mom, all that, like, you know, backstory that we've probably seen a million times, but it's true, right? I was completely broke and LinkedIn really saved me, you know? It allowed me to get clients without spending any money, without going anywhere, without having I had really bad mental health problems when I was younger. So, like, I, I couldn't stand up and talk in front of people and stuff like that. So it really helped me on loads of levels, you know, to get clients without spending any money or going anywhere, two little kids, like, most networking things in those days made by men so they're all like you know seven o'clock in the morning at some you know off the motorway somewhere and I was like I'll get two kids to school that's not happening I'm Didn't have one tomorrow <laughs> yeah exactly right she's fine when you can go but if you've got two little kids it's just not happening mm. and and no husband and like you know I had no money I was completely broke so paying to go to a networking event was like 15 quid I was, I was like pack lunches for the week so I'm not doing that so LinkedIn really you know and that's what I say to people you the opportunity is huge so if you are struggling in your business or you just want to get more money or you just want to create another revenue stream, like it's literally there for you. All of my training is free. Yeah. So I have a LinkedIn program, like a, a lifetime access program. You pay once you're in it forever. Right. But that's not for everybody. Everything I teach is completely free. Yeah. And like I say, people come to the program. They're like, right, what's what's the secret? And I'm like, you've had the training, but the program will help keep you on track because you'll get bored. You'll do you want to do something else, you know, and you'll stop doing it and it'll stop working. So we help inside the program, we help people keep on track. You know, we've got a community, we have live calls and and I talk about all different stuff business-wise. But the LinkedIn stuff, it's like open source. You know, every every um, podcast I'm on, I try and give everything away so as many people can get, a, you know, tangible stuff they can go and do tomorrow. You know, every live that I do, I run these five-day challenges for, you know, I think we've got six or 7,000 in this one for a week. I've had 100,000 people through that free challenge. Every time I'm on stage, I try and teach like, like like workshop style at EMC. I was the only person who did Q&A because I'm like, I'm trying to give, give, give so people can take it and actually go and make some money, you know, and then <laughs> fine. If you want to buy my program, great. If you don't, great. I'm not, you know, I'm all right. I've done really well out of it. So yeah, I'm on a bit of a mission to get get the, the word out as much as I can and sit down and write my bloody book. That's on the list of things to do. Just write the bloody book. Write the bloody book. That's that is actually on a post-it note somewhere. But I've obviously hit the mix. I'm not writing the book. <laughs> I've 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 got a quite question that's come out of something that you've said. Now okay. people will they'll they'll get what you say about making their headline, because normally when you set up a LinkedIn profile, if you don't change it, it'll be your job title. So yeah. the headline will be mortgage broker or web designer. But yeah. you change that and target it at your ideal client. That yeah. will help increase your click throughs to your profile so you can see somebody has viewed your profile. What do you do then when someone's viewed your profile? Absolutely nothing. I love that. I like that. I can do that. Yeah, right? It's, this is what I mean. Absolutely nothing. You let them view your profile and just come into your world. Yeah, right? At every stage of my stuff, the client is in control. Yeah. So you've asked them to connect. They can accept or reject. It's up to them, you know? And if they one of those people that comes back and is like, why should I be friends with you? I don't know you. I'm just like, you don't have to be friends with me, babe. It's fine. Like, I'm literally asking to start with 115 of you a week, so you're not going to make or break things for me. But, you know, they can accept or reject. So they come to the profile. They can either decide to be my friend on LinkedIn or not. They can look at my content as much or a little as one. They can comment on my content, and I'm not going to try and sell to them. I'm not there to sell to them. They're there to buy from me. So I don't DM them. I don't say thanks for connecting. I don't follow up with people who, who view my profile. I don't write personalized connection requests. I don't do any of the things that people say I should do. And it still works really well because what I want to do 
is to build my audience, yeah, strategically. I want to give back to LinkedIn. I want to make it a great place. So I do all my comments as much as I can. I want to remember, just do as I say, not as I do. But you know what I mean? I do the comments and I love it because people love it and everyone's having a nice time and we're making LinkedIn a nice place. And I put out content as much as I possibly can. I put post content and that's it. So there's no more, there's no strategy past that. That's it. So three things a day should take you less than half an hour a day. Obviously more if you want to do more comments, it's up to you. Or more if you want to reply to everyone who's commented. I don't, but you can if you want, you know. I kind of, I give you the structure, but it's, you know, you can you can use it as you wish. But the minimum to do is that three things a day, 30 minutes a day, and then just forget about it and go on with your day. So you don't use any automation tools? Absolutely, Absolutely not, <laughs> no, again, I've tried, I've tried them. I knew the guys that started LinkedIn Helper way, way back. And I said to them, you're going to get so many accounts shut down. And he said, we definitely won't. And he definitely did. So <laughs> what I always say about automation is use at your own risk. And the reason why I say that is, number one, they're going to get your account shut down. And that's going to be really sad if you've built it up. But people use burn accounts, so they don't care. But two is it's so easy to make a mistake. <laughs> and this is the it's too it, well, and it's and it's too tempting to become spammy, because what what the automation done is really clever, and you know, and I'm not I'm not averse to it in some ways. I can see the benefits, but it's too risky. It's too risky because two things that could happen is one, you start messaging people you don't like, or you don't get on with, or that you've had a fallout with. I mean, maybe this is just me, but do you know what I mean? Like, or somebody you would never send a DM to, you know? Yeah. But you send it because it's automated. And I just, mm -hmm. it makes me physically cringe. You know, I, I know where, I can't remember the name. Oh, yeah, I've, had, I've had that exact thing happen. <laughs> it's so cringy. But I was on the yeah. phone, physically on the phone to somebody who was convincing me that automation was the way forward. And he automate sent a message to me. And I was like, you're on the phone to me and you just pretended to follow up with me so it's this is what i mean this book because when you do things at scale it's bit, opportunities for messing up are more and more and more and i know the automation boys as i call them i'm sure they're not all boys and um, you know they're like rah, 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 all the conferences blah 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 they, they don't care about reputational damage mm -hmm. and that's like automation works i'm not saying it doesn't it'll it will get you qualified leads blah 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 but the leads you get inspire us say the leads you get probably may or may not show up because they've been basically talked into coming to a call or to, you know, to taking a next step. And also, I would say, if somebody falls for automation, are they really your ideal client? Do you really want to work with somebody who thinks, oh, this guy's really interested in me? Mm. It's a <laughs> so valid that. point. It's a valid point, yeah. <laughs> but the other thing is, with power becomes great responsibility. So when you get a really good automation tool, and they're all good, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of half interested, half terrified of what automation plus AI is going to do. It's going to create this sort of baby of disaster, I think. There's going to be like Godzilla marauding around LinkedIn, breaking things. But I do think that, and, and this is true, and I've got a business partner who's used automation, right? And they were just like, I'm just going to use it. I don't care what you say. And I'm like, okay, fine. But then he was like, I just... I just gonna. I just end up being a spammer. It's like I've had to take it off because it's just too tempting to just say, "Yeah, message everybody this and connect with all these people and view all their profiles." And I get it. I just don't. I just don't do it. I just don't do it. It's too risky for me. I value my reputation too highly. And um, I have used automation in the past, and I've used DM strategy in the past because quite often people screenshot it and send it to me, and I'm like, "Yeah, that was 2016, mate." Like I get it. Like I did do it, but I, I kind of try things and then. It, if it does it make my work better or worse and for those two things definitely worse i mean the thought of losing my linkedin account you know not something i'm willing to risk but if you if you're not bothered and i know some guys who do this and they'll you know pay them they'll do it they'll set you up tons of burner accounts with beautiful ladies on the pictures and send you tons and tons of messages and people will want a, a meeting with that beautiful lady and then she won't be around and brian from accounts will have to go and blah, 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 so honeypot accounts but yeah, yeah the ultimate bait and switch yeah that's so I, yeah so that's where i stand on automation it's the same as with pods it's like personalized connection requests i don't recommend you do that now it's not because i'm particularly offended by them it's just that when you get one you always feel like the next thing is going to be a spammy cell and it always is mm. you know so i always think 
there's two ways to look at personalized connection requests. One is like the proper way. So you're going to go and look at somebody's, um, you know, profile, watch the look at their stuff and write a really, you know, polite, well-researched, you know, outreach message that says, oh, I saw you did this, did this, I saw this. I haven't got time for that. Have you got time for that, Darren? Nobody's um, got time for that. Yeah, exactly. So, and, I, and if someone sent me that, I would think that was weird. Possibly <laughs> a bit worrying, right? Mm. Or you can do like a copy and paste thing. And that's just crap. And everyone can see it's just a copy and paste thing. So I always say, when I get, I get asked this all the time on stage or whatever, I always say, I don't think there's anything you can say to a stranger on the internet that doesn't make you seem a bit weird. So yeah. let's not say anything. Let's just use the one that I'm sure LinkedIn have tested to death, which says, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn, which is exactly what it says on LinkedIn. Hmm. That's what I think about that. Oh, it's, it's, the advice you're giving is just basically people need to spend less time doing stuff. Less time, yeah. And less time thinking. So we talked today about strategy, right? And mm. when I say do these three things a day, you think people will just do it. Well, they don't. They don't. And what, they, what I wanted to just talk about briefly is mindset. So mindset is a word I don't really kind of, it doesn't really mean anything, if you know what I mean. But this is something that I see over and over and over again in my programs. Yeah, people are so worried about what people will think. They're so worried about how they show up on LinkedIn or if they're posting too much or not enough or if they're doing or saying or being the right things. This is why I say that it paralyzes people. I do, you know, I've done in-house corporate workshops for massive organizations. And I remember this woman, she was like, I don't know, head VP of blah, blah, blah. You know, it's probably on about a quarter of a million pounds of bags worth more than my car. <laughs> and she couldn't press go on the, the thing. And she went into a big red, rashy, like almost panic attack of like, I just don't want to post on LinkedIn because what will people think? And it's just like, and I leant over and I pressed it. And she was like, oh, I feel all right now it's done because people don't care about you. They're not interested in what you're doing. They're interested in what do they're doing, what's going on with them. So it's really been a massive and unexpected part for me of my journey is to be a therapist. Like I never thought that. I thought I would just tell people what to do and they would do it. Absolutely not the truth. People get very, very, very caught up in this overthinking, overanalyzing, almost paralyzed. And, and if they don't get instant results, then they start to doubt themselves. And they want to change everything and they want to go back to the, you know, and it becomes very personal and very emotional, you know, much more than, you know, I'm, I'm spiritual and I'm into energetics and I'm into strategy and I'm into that. So I'm kind of like, I can do all of it, but I never thought building and scaling an online training business, which is what mine is, would have so much soft skills required. But I'm there mm. for it. But it's true. I think, and it's not just women. <laughs> I do have a lot of women. I've got men as well. Men do tend to be a lot better at just going and getting on with it. Um, but I think everybody has a bit of that fear of visibility. You know, I think you'd probably be a little bit, cold if you didn't but I, I think LinkedIn brings that out in people because we, we over the years we've sort of been told that you've got to be a certain way on LinkedIn so mm -hmm. kind of part of my mission has been let's be the change we want to see on LinkedIn let's go and be ourselves you can talk about your family you can you can swear on LinkedIn you can you know you can talk about business stuff and personal stuff you can do long videos short videos you can do posts you can do social proof you can sell on LinkedIn a lot of people are like oh I can't be selling on LinkedIn people think I'm desperate I'm like Please, you are going to be desperate if you don't sell. <laughs> so, you know, I think a lot of my unexpected kind of purpose in the last few years has been to say, look, let's go. It's going to be fine. Don't worry. Mm. I mean, what, what you mentioned then about swearing and family stuff, I did a podcast about this a couple of weeks ago. Um, there are the LinkedIn police. Yes, they are. Well, they're not real, but they are. They're not they real. Are. No, no, they're not real. They call themselves the LinkedIn. They are. <laughs> they, just, yeah. they branded the LinkedIn police. They're these yeah. people that will go around and tell you that you shouldn't be posting pictures 100%. of your holiday, pictures of your family. You shouldn't be airing stuff about politics or religion yeah. because that's just not what LinkedIn is about. LinkedIn is about business, and it should only be about business and corporate stuff. Yeah, and what? I think that's definitely true. That is definitely a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. and I definitely when I. When I first came on the scene as a LinkedIn person, right, you know, not what I wanted to be when I grew up, but, you know, I kind of rebranded myself as this thing. It was like everybody was going mad at me about everything. And, and I used to get into these, and anyone who's followed me for a long time will remember this, I used to get into these huge arguments online. I really did. Like I can, I can relate. 
because people used to come to my post. I wasn't going to this, and they'd be like, "You're wrong. You're this. You're that. You're really. I, you know." I've got people saying, I, "Like, I had a recruit saying I should be, I should be punched in the face because I said that if you reply to every single comment you get on LinkedIn, I don't think, wow, what a great, great engaged guy. I think, God, you've got nothing else to do, All right? So obviously, it's slightly inflammatory, and um, you know. But then I've got people, you know, like you know, I did the helping headline talked about that and then I had this woman make a slideshow of all the helping headlines that she could find and saying ha 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 look at this person teaching this this is original everyone looks the same and I was like every single one of those headlines is different because the ideal client is different yeah I was like you just and also you've got a job you've got a job I'm going to come to your office <laughs> I'm going to sit in reception and I'm going to show your boss that you spent at least 20 minutes making a slideshow on his time you know and it's just like I got so so much of it and I really reacted to it. I really did. And I'm not particularly proud of it, but I just used to just defend myself to the death, right? And have these ongoing arguments with people. Like I say, people were bored at work. Mm. I'm going, I would defend myself to the death. And my dope, you know, my, my adrenaline would be spiking and I'd be like eating dinner with the kids, but really be thinking, I can't wait to get back and see what that woman said. So I can, you know, get the last word in. It was just ridiculous, right? And I used to get a lot of that. Like this is LinkedIn, I don't want to see personal stuff. And in the end, I realized, like, there's a quite a famous uh, quote. <laughs> I think it's from Nas the Rapper or something, or, uh, or Ice Cube or something. And it's like, don't argue with idiots because from a distance, no one can tell who's who. <laughs> and I just thought, I'm just, what am I doing? So I kind of made a decision to not do that anymore. And a lot of people loved it. I used to get a lot of business from it. People go, like, oh, I just saw that woman came to your post and you took, you know, you really, you know, standing up for yourself. And then I realized it's not worth it. So now what I teach and what I do is to be much more zen. I don't get that much pushback now, but I've been in the game a long time. And I've got a lot of evidence. So I didn't have any evidence then. So I was like so desperate, you know, to prove myself that I was yeah. like, I would spend that time. Now I don't need to. Right. I, I, I would say, you know, when someone says, oh, my, my friend said that I shouldn't do what you do, you say to do, because, um, you know, she said that if I post a sales post, then people will think I'm desperate. And I always say, look, well, has your friend sold £3 million in LinkedIn training? And they go, no, no, she's a she's a dog walker. And I'm like, well, don't, don't listen to her then, listen to me. So, like, what I now do is I say, if you like the comments that you're getting, keep them. If you don't like them, delete them. Mm. Your profile, babe. You do whatever you want. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely more an early you. I think I will. Yeah. I will argue with everybody, and and I will do stuff to to stoke it. Um, yes. <laughs> and I'll take it across to different platforms if I can as well. <laughs> it's not worth it, Aaron. I'm metaphorically holding you back. It's not worth <laughs> it. It's not worth it. I, I I can't. I can't stop it. <laughs> There's a stranger on the internet said something and they have to be told that they are wrong. Oh, I've um, had some that have gone on for days, weeks, months. You know, people have had to avoid events because I'm like, I can't even speak to you because we really went at it. And I would like to apologise if I've upset anybody because, you know what, it's stupid really. It's not really, the, it's definitely not the ladylike way to behave. But now I'm just so over it. Honestly, if somebody gives me shit, I just either ignore them, delete them, block them, depending on how annoying they are, you know. <laughs> Um, well, and then my life's a lot calmer for it. There's a Twitter account on uh, on Twitter, funnily enough, called Yodel Hell, um, which is mine, which tells I, you which tells you how long I will keep these going for because that's been going since about 2016. Um, <laughs> love it. And that was just over one badly delivered package. But there we go. So yeah, I I will turn these into an industry if I can. I see what I'm dealing with here. Yeah. yeah. Well, so it's yeah. also it's also got a website uh, <laughs> and and a really popular top ten horrendous things they've done post um but anyway what <laughs> let's go off vindictiveness one question i did want to ask because you you touched on it earlier um about companies being able to offset obviously the cost of a, a professional linkedin profile yeah. what are the main differences and, and and would you recommend somebody has one um so normally i've got a dead straight answer so normally i say you don't need one i didn't have one for years I didn't even have a website for years, but you know, I didn't have one for years. I really couldn't see, I couldn't see the benefit past. You could see more than the last three people that asked to connect with you, uh, that viewed your profile. So in a way, I thought that was not really worth having. However, I do feel like my advice is probably going to change to having the basic business one because it just seems to really grease the wheels. 
it kind of appeases the LinkedIn gods, you mm -hmm. know? So if you are asking, doing a lot of searches, you're asking to connect with people, you may be leaving your connection request pending a bit longer than you would normally. I normally say between sort of four and six weeks. I feel like I don't, I could be totally wrong, by the way, because I don't know this to be true, mm. but it just, now I've got it, I can see a bit more data. So I can see like my profile views and my little arrow going up or down, which is quite nice. I can see everyone who's fully viewed me. You know, so I get, on average, at the moment, again, this might change. I'm at about three, three thousand, three and a half thousand profile views every ninety days. So, like, that's quite a lot of people. Now, I did say I don't do anything with them, but it's quite nice to look at them, see who they are. I might see someone really interesting, and then I might think, like, ask them to connect. I guess I don't really do that as a part of a strategy, but I you know I like to see. It's quite nice, um, and it means that I can probably, possibly, almost definitely do more searches. And I did hear a rumour, and this is definitely a rumour, that premium accounts may in the future be allowed many, many more connection requests. Now, when I first started, we were allowed, again, it's not an exact science, but we weren't getting banned from sending 100 connection requests a day. Wow. That was the, we did it manually. We didn't use the thing, but we did 100 a day. Still only takes 10, 15 minutes. And those were the good old days. So mm. then you were getting 25, 30, 40 people a day joining your, your, you know, your, your network. They were the good old days. And we did that for a long time. I used to say that at events and people just like spit the tea out because they just couldn't imagine it. But like, that's how we did it. And that's worked really well. Then there must have been a time where everyone's just like, get, me included. I had to like beg this guy called Reese in customer service. I was like, please, mate. You don't understand. Please, will you let me use my account again? Because this is kind of my business and I promise. You know what I mean? I was like, I promise. We'll ask to connect two people. So we found the kind of sweet spot of, and again, this came from a town hall meeting that somebody, you know, a friend of a friend went to. So it's still not exactly evidence. Mm -hmm. um, and they heard that you're allowed 115 a week. So that's kind of what I teach now. That's what we stick to. And again, people don't seem to be touch wood, you know, having a problem. But I did hear a rumour that non-premium accounts are going to get limited to 10 a week, maybe, or something like that. And then premiums might be more. So I would definitely pay for premium if I could get back up to 100 people a day, for sure. True. And LinkedIn would lift that. I'm stuck at 30, 30, 38,000 because I can't ask to connect with any new people without getting rid of people. Do you know, um, somebody else mentioned to me about the 10 a week thing as well. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing a lot of connection requests on, on a weekly basis for a while. And a few weeks ago, I got a notification on LinkedIn saying you've hit your maximum 10 a week. Really? Yeah. Have you got I've, a premium? No. No, free account. And I thought, shit, they've brought this in. Mm, but I think it's, it's back. Out, yeah. to, but it's back to normal again now. So I okay. suspect there was some kind of test that was going, and I got dropped into it by mistake. Yeah, I got the ten a week warning, and then it's come out again. So there's definitely something going on with the ten a week stuff. Yeah, I do. This is what I mean. I've heard rumors. So I mean, again, this will be this. You know, when this goes out, it might be true. You know, when you listen to this, it might be in a year's yeah, time, right? So I don't know. This, this could be, be this could be old news. Yeah, this could be like old news. I could yeah. be old news by then, right? But <gasps> no, I won't be. No. Um, but I think that's really interesting. And I think if LinkedIn were a bit more transparent and said, "Look, if you pay sixty quid a month, you can connect with as many people as you want," we'd all buy it. <laughs> but because it's all like mm. we don't really know. So I tell you what did happen. So this business partner of mine who I said was just like I'm just going to do automation so obviously the automation that they invested in was AI sort of you know I don't know enabled in some way hmm. and they suggested to him how many connection requests they were going to send a week and because he had premium I think they they did about I don't know maybe like 400 or 500 or something do you know what I mean? It's almost like there was a sliding scale and it picked this scale mm. and it's almost like maybe they know, no, know more than we know. I don't know. But it's just frustrating because if they're just... Oh, you should be allowed to have more than 30,000 connections, that's for sure, if anyone at LinkedIn's listening. Um, and you should be able to send as many connection requests as you want. This is... It's kind of like LinkedIn's got this like one foot in the past of this is a CV... Only connect with people you know, only post about work. Mm. And one thought in the future of like, this is the most incredible marketing opportunity we've ever seen. This database of nearly everybody in the world, you know, like in, in the sort of 
in the modern world who's interested in business or having a career, right? It's, it's, it's huge, but they're not, they're not, they're kind of keep, trying to keep in both camps. And I think yeah. like if they did like a marketer's premium, yeah, it's 100 quid a month, you can connect as many people as you want, you don't, you know, whatever, then we'd all be buying it. What I will say about premium though is sales navigator is really good if you need it. Now, most people I work with don't need it. But if you want to work with people who have recently changed jobs, who are in an engineering company that's got over a thousand people who are in a certain part of the UK, for example, it is so clever the way you can do it. Yeah. And it can be very, very nuanced. So you can see people who've recently been in the press. It used to anyway, again, I've not used it for a while, but people used to be in the press. You have a separate um, dashboard. So just your leads go in there and you can put people as like use it as like a CRM. So it's very clever. And I think well worth the money, but I don't use it because I don't need it to that level. I think for somebody who wants to be very sophisticated with the kind of searches they do and the people they want to work with and, and really use it as a prospecting tool, Sales Navigator is pretty good. Wow. Mm. Okay, I think well, that... it's not really good though, Darren. What's that? I say what was not really good, business pages. They're awful. Mm. You can't do anything with them. You can't ask to connect with people. You can't do anything really interactive. It's just pumping content out so yeah all you can do is inv it. invite people to like them and that's about it yeah i know years ago you used to be able to put services on business page and people could re recommend you for the services but linkedin took all that off with very little notice yeah and they were advising people if you want to save those recommendations then save them down to word and that's right. what they said so it was like doing reviews of your personal profile, but on services on a business page, and they just wiped um, it all out overnight. It seems like a massive wasted opportunity because a really cool interactive business page would be fantastic because one of the number one questions I get is, I've got two businesses. Which one can I use? How can I promote them both? And I'm like, you can't really. You need mm. to pick one and focus on that. So it would be great if we could have multiple business pages um, for different offers and stuff. It would be fab. Um, and also groups, just rubbish. Like, just cannot get a group. I don't know anyone who's got a group really bouncing. You can just put stuff in there and you get a bit of engagement, but most of them just tumbleweed, you know, compared to Facebook, which is hmm. fantastic for community. I feel like LinkedIn's missing a big trick there. But a couple of things I do really like that's new on LinkedIn. And again, by the time you listen to this, they might have took them away again. We don't know. <laughs> um, uh, LinkedIn events, great. You can invite a thousand hmm. people a week to an event. That's pretty cool. And you can segment them by sector. So I did like a LinkedIn for accountants and bookkeepers one. And then just invited people who are in the accountancy niche, which was really cool. Thought that was dead, dead good. Um, and LinkedIn audio events. Again, this is fresh to me. They've been around for a while, but if you remember Clubhouse, it's the same as Clubhouse, yeah. but inside of LinkedIn. So really, really cool for me because I can keep the, it's just audio only, so you don't need to be dressed, which is brilliant. <laughs> Um, and it's just like radio and you bring people up on stage and it's all within LinkedIn. So everyone's little circle avatar things are their LinkedIn ones. So you can, so for me, it would be brilliant. So I could have them all on stage and I could go to their, when I click, when you click on the little avatar, the page comes up behind the little box. I'm not explaining it very well, but. I know means, what you mean. I, yeah, yeah I, can, I could do LinkedIn reviews while mm. people are live on the stage and I'm sure you could do stuff as well. But mm. I thought that was really cool. And if you're in a room together, you can all connect with each other. Hmm. Cool. that does sound cool i remember clubhouse clubhouse was huge and and then yeah, it, it. it stopped i made a lot of money out of clubhouse so thanks clubhouse people. Yeah. if you're listening <laughs> it was great it yeah. was great while it lasted it's almost great that it burned brightly and then went because it just means we haven't got another thing to keep doing but oh yeah, yeah I had a morning show i was doing rooms all the time it was i got in some really big stages met some great people made a lot of money so yeah no regrets hmm. okay i think we're we're out of time Yes. So finally, uh, if somebody's listening to this and thinks, oh, my God, I need to work with you, what is the best way for someone to connect with you? I'm suspecting it's LinkedIn. It is LinkedIn. It is LinkedIn. LinkedIn. I knew it would be. Well, actually, Facebook's my favorite. So this is my <gasps> – yeah. So Wash your follow, mouth out. I don't know. So follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I can't have any new friends on Instagram. no not Instagram, on LinkedIn and Facebook. I can't have any new friends. I'm maxed out on LinkedIn and I'm maxed out on Facebook and it drives me mad. But you can follow me on either platform, send me a message, say this is where you heard me, it'd be great, thank you. Um, and just DM me and ask me for some free stuff. And I'll, I've got loads of free stuff. I've got, oh my God, I've got hours and hours of 
like special like LinkedIn webinars, LinkedIn masterclasses, I've got like anything you could possibly you DM me and tell me where you're at. I'll give you some free training. Like I've got it all at my fingertips. There's always a free five day challenge coming up. We run every couple of months, and there's always a master class coming up. We run those in between. So um yeah, that just come and find me and I'll help you. But if you just think I just want to buy her thing, don't worry, you can do that too. You can join the links <laughs> business mastermind and just DM me for the bonuses and I'll give you the secret bonus of the day. Fantastic. I will put the link to your Facebook profile page and your LinkedIn below the podcast. So anybody wants to click on that, they can go straight to that as well. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen, for doing this. It's been brilliant. I've learned so much. I hope everybody else has as well. Um, just huge thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. Lots of love. Thank you. Thank you.